Hola, buenos días. Nos escucháis en ADEX en el aire, la radio digital del ISADG. Vamos a celebrar Halloween con el grupo de cuarto de Sobel y su profesora de inglés Belén Llanes, a quien doy paso para que brevemente os explique en qué consiste la actividad que vamos a emitir. Hola a toda la comunidad educativa del ISADG. El grupo de cuarto de Sobel ha trabajado desde la materia de inglés la propuesta de María Álvarez, coordinadora del eje temático de comunicación lingüística de la red de Innovas. Esta propuesta consiste en elaborar un audio poemario cuyo autor es Tim Burton y cuyo título es eh, The Melancholy Death of Buster Boy. Gracias María por esta propuesta tan interesante y a continuación voy a nombrarles a cada alumno y a cada alumna por orden de intervención. Acer Aragón, Paula Baladrón, Hanna Beresova, Jorge Dorta, Elisabetta Selly, Bruno Calavaro, Aray García, Víctor Hernández, Lidia Hernández, Héctor Jorge, Virginia Babasori, G. Lee, Alba Márquez, Kevin Martínez, Ana Montoya, Roman Pinto, Miguel Pérez, Kashish Pridanani, Ishika Pridanani, Olivia Ramos, Paula Ruiz, Teo Troncoso, Víctor Cateliev, Jorge Vintró. The Melancholy Death of Oyster Boy and Other Stories. Stick Boy Liked Much Girl in Love. Stick Boy Liked Much Girl. He liked her a lot. He liked her cute figure. He thought she was hot. Voodoo girl. Her skin is white clothes, and she is all sewn apart. And she has many colored pins sticking out her heart. She has many different zombies who are deeply in her trance. She even has a zombie who was originally from France. Robot boy. Mr. and Mrs. Smith had a wonderful life. They were a normal, happy husband and wife. One day, they got the news that made Mr. Smith glad. Mrs. Smith would be a mom, which would make him the dad. But something was wrong with their bundle of joy. It wasn't human at all. It was a robot boy. He wasn't warm and cuddly, and he didn't have skin. Instead, there was cold, thin layer of thin. There were wires and tubes sticking out of his head. He just lay there and stared, not living or dead. Starring Girl I once knew a girl who would just stand there and stare at anyone or anything. She seemed not to care. She'd stare at the ground. She'd stare at the sky. She'd stare at you for hours, and you'd never know why. But after winning the local starring contest, she finally gave her eyes a well-deserved rest. The boy with nails in his eyes. The boy with nails in his eyes put up uh, his aluminum tree. It looked pretty strange because he couldn't really see. The girl with many eyes. One day in the park, I had quite a surprise. I met a girl who had many eyes. She was really quite pretty and also quite soaking. And I noticed she had a mouth. So we ended up talking. We talked about flowers and her poetry classes and the problems she had had if she ever wore glasses. It's great to know a girl who has so many eyes, but you really get wet when she breaks down and cries. Stainboy, of all the superheroes, the strangest one by far, doesn't have a special power or drive a fancy car. Next to Superman and Batman, I guess he must seem tame, but to me he is quite special, and Stainboy is his name. He can fly around tall buildings, or outrun a speeding train. The only talent he seems to have is to leave a nasty stain. Sometimes I know it bothers him, 
that he can run or swim or fly. And because of this one ability, his dry cleaning bill is sky high. The melancholy death of Oyster Boy. He proposed in the dune, they were wet by the sea. Their nine day long honeymoon was on the Isle of Capri. For the supper they have one spectacular dish, a similar stew of mollusk and fish. And while he savored the broth, her bright third made a wish. That wish come tr came true, she gave birth to a baby. But was this little one human? Well, maybe. Ten fingers, ten toes, held plumbing on sight. He could hear, he could feel, but normal? Not quite. This unnatural birth, this canker, this blight, was the start and the end and the sum of the plight. She railed at the doctor, he cannot be mine, he smelled of the ocean, of seaweed and wine and brine. You should count yourself lucky, for only this last week I treat the girl with three ears and a beak. That your son is half oyster you cannot blame me. Have you ever considered but the chance small home by the sea? Not knowing what to name him, they just call him Sam, or sometimes that things that look like a clown. Everyone wondered, but no one could tell. When would John Oyster Boy came out of his shell? When the Thompson quadruplets spied him one day, they called him a billway and ran quickly away. One spring afternoon, Sam was left in the rain at the sunwester corner of Seaview and Maine. He watched the rainwater as swirled down the drain. His mom on the freeway in the breakdown lane was putting the dashboard she couldn't contain, the ever rising grief, frustration and pain. Really sweet her, she said. I don't mean to make fun, but sometimes it smells fishy and I think it's our son. I don't like to say this, but it must be said. You blame your son of our son for your problems in bed. He tried salves, he tried ointment that turned everything red. He tried potions and lotion and tinctures, tinctures of lead. He ached and he ached, and he twitched and he bleed. The doctor diagnosed, I can't, I can't quite be sure. But the cause of the problem may also be the cure. They say oyster improve your sexual powers. Perhaps eating your son will help you to do it for hours. He came on tiptoe, he came on sly, sweet on his forehead and his, on his lips a lie. Son, are you happy? I don't mean to pry, but do you dream of heaven? Have you ever wanted to die? Sam blinked his eyes twice, but made no reply. That fingers his knife and loosened his tie. As he picked up his son, Sam dripped on his coat. With the shell to his lips, Sam slips down his throat. They buried him quickly in the sand by the sea. Sighed a prayer, wept a tear, and they were back to home by three. A cross of grey driftwood mar mark Oyster Boy's grave. Words within the sun promised Jesus would save. <laughs> but his memory was lost with one high tide wave. Stan Boy's Special Christmas For a Christmas, Stan Boy got a new uniform. It was clean and well pressed, comfy and warm, but in fair short minutes. No longer than ten. Those wet, greasy stains started forming again. The girl who turned it into a bed. It happened that day. She picked up a strange pussy willow. Her head swelled up white and soft as a pillow. Her skin, which has turned all flaky and rotten, was now replaced with 100% cotton. Through her organs and torso, she sprawled like wings and beautiful set of mattress and springs. Roy the Toxic Boy To those who knew him and his friends, we called him Roy. To others, he was known as that horrible toxic boy. He loved ammonia and asbestos and lots of cigarette smoke. What he breathed in for air 
make other people talk. His very favorite toy was a can of aerosol spray. He'd sit quietly and shake it and spray it all the day. He'd stand inside the garage in the early morning frost, waiting for the car to start and fill him with exhaust. The one and only time I ever saw of Toxic Boy cry was when some sodium chloride got into his eye. One day for fresh air, they put him in the garden. His face went deathly pale and his body began to harden. The final gasp of his short life was sickly with despair. Whoever thought that you could die from breathing outdoor air. As Roy Sue left his body, we all said a silent prayer. It reached out to heaven and left a hole in the ozone layer. James. Anne Weasley sent a offer that they bear to James, unaware that he had been mauled by a grizzly earlier that year. The Stick Boys first this season. The Stick Boy noticed that his Christmas tree looked healthier than he did. Bright Boy. Bright Boy had a dream. He had only had twice that his full round head was only a slice. The other children never let Bright Boy play, but at least he went well with a nice Chardonnay. Mummy Boy. He wasn't soft and pink, with a fat little tummy. He was hard and hollow, like a little boy mummy. Tell us, please, doctor, the reason or cause, why our gundle of joy is just a bundle of gauze. My diagnosis, he said, for better or worse, is that your son is the result of an old farewell's curse. That night they talked of the son's odd condition. They called him a reject from an archaeological expedition. They thought of some complex scientific explanation, but assumed it was simple supernatural reincarnation. With the other young tots, he only played twice, an ancient game of vermin sacrifice. But the kids ran away, saying you aren't very nice. Alone and rejected, mummy boy wept, then went to the cabinet where the snack food was kept. He wiped his wet, he wiped his wet slockets with his mummified sleeves, and sat down to a bowl of sugar-frosted tiny leaves. One dark, gloomy day, from out of the fog, appeared a little white mummy dog. For his newfound rubber pet, he did many things, like building a doghouse a la premier of kings. It was late in day, just before dark. Mummy boy took his dog for a walk in the park. The park was empty, except for a squirrel, and a birthday party for a Mexican girl. The boys and girls had all started to play, but noticed that thing that looked like a paper mache. Look, it's a piñata, said one of the boys. Let's crack it wide open and get the candy and toys. They took a baseball bat and whacked open his head. Mummy boy fell to the ground. He finally was dead. Inside of his head were no candy or prizes, just a few stray beetles of various sizes. Junk Girl There once was a girl who was made up of junk. She looked really dirty, and she smelled like a skunk. She was always unhappy, or in one of her slums, perhaps cause she spent so much time down in the dumps. The only bright moment was from a guy named Stan. He was from the neighborhood garbage man. The pincushion queen. Life isn't easy for the pincushion queen. When she sits alone on a throne, pins push through a spleen. Melonhead. There was once a morose melonhead who sat there all day and wished he were dead. Sue, to avoid a loud sweet, we'll just call her Sue or that girl who likes to sniff lots of glue. The reason I know that this is the case is when she blows her nose, Kleenex sticks to her face. Jimmy, the hideous penguin boy. My name is Jimmy, but my friends just call me the hideous penguin boy. Char Boy For Christmas, Char Boy received his usual lumps of coal, which made him very happy. For Christmas, Char Boy received a small present instead of 
his usual lamp of gold, which confused him very much. For Christmas, Cherboy was mistaken for a dirty fireplace and swept out into the street. Anchor Baby There was a beautiful girl who came from the sea and there was just one place that she wanted to be with a man named Walker who played in a band. She would leave the ocean and come onto the land. He was the one that she wanted the most and she tried everything to capture this ghost. But throughout all their lives, they never connected. She wandered there alone and rejected. She tried looking happy. She tried looking tragic. She tried astral projecting, sex and black magic. Nothing could join them, except maybe one thing. Just maybe, something to anchor the spirits. They had a baby. But to give birth to a baby, they needed a crane. The umbilical cord was in the form of a chain. It was ugly and gloomy, and as hard as a kiddo. It had no pink skin, just heavy grey middle. The baby that was meant to bring them together just sheltered them both in a cloud of full weather. So Walker took off to play with the band, and from that day on, he stayed mainly on land. And she was alone with her grey baby anchor, who got so oppressive that eventually sank her, and she went to the bottom, not fooling her wish. It was her and her baby, and a few scattered fish. Oyster Boy Steps Out For Halloween, Oyster Boy decides to go as a human. Hasta aquí las historias de estos niños solitarios, extraños y diferentes, fieles al universo particular de Tim Burton, donde prevalece la melancolía, el amor, el humor negro y la fantasía. Nos despedimos, esperamos que el programa haya sido de vuestro agrado. Nos vemos en ADEX en el aire, la radio digital del ISADG. 